Hey everybody, welcome to the Chem2 Introductory Lab. Um, let's go ahead and jump right in, get going. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is measuring circumference. So radius is half of a diameter, okay? Your radius is half a diameter. Your diameter is from one point of the circle to the other point of the circle, straight across from it. And your circumference is your around, your measurement around. There are two different ways to write the formula um, to, uh, to find circumference, and they both involve pi. Now, one of the formulas might contain the radius, while another contains the diameter. But either way, they both involve pi, which you got to forgive my brain on this, but if you never, you, you never know if one of uh, you might be able to relate to one of my mind tricks. And this is what, uh, this is how kind of I play these mind tricks with myself, right? So we have a pi and we have Pac-Man. Now Pac-Man is a circle, right? But if you look at the center of Pac-Man, that's going to be, if you were to measure right here from the center, right here, there we go from the center straight across, that is going to be your radius, okay? And if you finish this circle and measure from here to straight across is your radius, but everything across straight is your diameter, okay? So this this lab says that you pick five items. However, I've learned that I need to assign items to give to you or it takes me two weeks to grade your lab. And because I have to do all the calculations for whatever everyone chooses, I hope you can understand um, I like to have labs grade them back to you as quickly as possible. I do grade them digitally, and I do up the, upload the graded copy so you can see it. And I try to do that within the first 48 hours after you turn them in. Usually quicker, but I try to do it really quick. Um, all that to say, what measurement are we going to be measuring to the nearest? Well, the information goes into your lab notebook for all your transcriptions later, but you'll be measuring a graduated cylinder, a beaker. What you see right here in the center, this one right here, this is a five, 500, um, 500 milliliter plastic bottle. This is what we're calling a carboy, and this will be a piece of metal. And all those things will be ready for you when you come to lab. So the first thing that we should understand, we have these two formulas, right? Our circumference is represented by C, our diameter is represented by D, and our radius represented by R. So these are the two different um, formulas that you could use. You're gonna, a plot of C on the Y axis versus D on the X axis should result in a straight line with a slope, with a slope equal to pi, okay? Let's not forget sig figs. I say this because we always forget about sig figs, but sig figs are very important. And I know we took uh, a class period last week to go over sig figs. I know you guys have done a lab on it. So hopefully um, you'll remember going forward in all these 12-12 labs that sig figs do matter. Okay, and if you're confused, we have tons of sig fig videos, make sure you check those out. All right, and this is just a reminder about addition and subtraction of sig figs, and then you have multiplication and division of sig figs. Again, if you're confused, make sure you go and check out the sig fig videos. So real quick, just rounding numbers. Knowing how and when to round your numbers properly is really, really important. And we're always gonna round our milliliters to two decimal places. So if you're measuring in a burette, if you're measuring in a graduated cylinder, anything that's gonna be measured in milliliters, we're gonna um, round to two decimal places, just like you see up here. So rounding is not only useful, but it can also help you be more precise in your answer. And precision is the name of the game when it comes to chemistry. So just know that we have um, five, and that's going to be our center. If we are four or less, we're going to round down. And if we are five or more, we're going to round up. Okay. So if you are confused about rounding numbers, make sure you reach out and ask those questions. All right, let's talk about exact numbers real quick. So exact numbers are nothing more than values that we know and are complete certainty. Numbers like one dozen is 12 eggs and one foot is 12 inches. One cup is eight ounces. They are always that way. You can measure in ounces. You can measure, measure in cups. Um, they're going to be known numbers. They're given to us. They have an infant number of significant figures and they're common knowledge, okay? Measurements can vary according to what and whom and how someone is measuring a certain object, um, it's never just a given or a known number, okay? So if we're going to talk about scientific notation, by moving your decimal eight spaces to the left, um, 
the power of 10 is raised. We have our speed of light, which is 2.99 times 10 to the 8th, right? So 2.99 times 10 to the 8th is 299 million, right, meters per second. Uh, speed of light is measured in meters per second. So if we're going to put that in scientific notation. We're simply going to move our decimal place over until we have one coefficient than our decimal, okay? That's where I got that 2.99 times 10 to the 8th. When we move it to the left, the power is raised, and the same rules apply if we move it to the right, the power is going to be lower. So if we had taken that zero and moved it eight places to the right instead of to the left, we would have had 10.99 times 10 to the negative eight, but that is not the speed of light. All right, calculators. Now this is an opportunity to enter in numbers in exponential or scientific notation. We don't call it exponential. That's a math class thing. We call it scientific notation. The abbreviation that you on your calculator is given is EE or EXP. It's not the same as the analog times 10 button. I just want to throw that out there. Using these buttons are likely going to help you maintain less of a chance of making an error. I also like to say that I take my numbers out of scientific notation when it comes to the calculator because it's given me such a hard time for a really long time. So sometimes it might be easier to pull it out of scientific notation, do the math, and put it back in. But you can use your calculator if you're comfortable with that. You're going to make sure you're using parentheses when it's necessary. And I find it easier to use the parentheses button instead of the times button, okay, like your, your, um, your EE button. Um, putting your, or not your E, I'm sorry, your multiplication symbol. My bad, sorry about that. So you're going to um, put your calculator um I'm sorry, use the second button, press your EE, and you see they're like right here. There are these buttons, but they're falling blue. So your second blue, your second button is blue. You have your EE here or here, and it might also read EXP. It just depends. So that's all we have for our introductory lab lecture. Uh, you guys are responsible for watching your lectures every week. If you have questions, make sure you reach out. Um, if you guys decide that you want to have a discussion uh, board or something where you can go in and ask questions or at least just you know as you're watching the video you have a question you can type it in that way I can address it first thing for class and uh, I look forward to seeing you this week